Hi, my name is Frank and I'm an Orgo tutor here at Boston University's ERC and this is video 2 of 6 on NMRs. You're almost halfway done. So this video is going to be about the basics of NMRs. So first I want to go back to my first video and um, uh, you remember when I talked about the spinning of the protons? Well what we do in NMRs is basically we put these, um, the protons in an electromagnetic field. So depending on how, how, many, how much electrons are shielding the protons, their spins are going to be shifted more or less. So usually, um, like, I, like I talked about before, if there's more, more electrons, it's going to shield the protons more, preventing them from shifting more. And then, if, so depending on how dense the electron field is around the proton itself, it can protect the proton from shifting. So if there is a high uh, amount of electrons shielding the proton, then it'll probably be in this area here. And we call this area upfield. Up field, and this area has shielded protons, like these guys. Okay, and then if your proton is more deshielded, like this function, functional group that I explained in the last video, then chances are uh, the proton's going to shift more because it's going to feel the, feel more of the effects of the magnet. So the shift number is going to be higher. So then what we call this side of the NMR is basically uh, downfield. So I'm just going to write here. Downfield, and then uh, the more downfield downfield you go, the more deshielded the hydrogens are. So deshielded upfield, so you can kind of remember it as double D, and then upfield shielded. And a, another trick I use to remember this is if you take your NMR and you literally just turn it, then downfield will be more down, and upfield will be more up. Okay, hope that helps. Okay, uh, let's go on from there. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was what the NMR basically tells us. So the NMR can tell us basically the structure of the molecules based on their hydrogen environments because, um, like I said before, uh, the more if the environment is more deshielded, chances are the ship is going to be picked up here, and if the environment is more shielded, the chances are the ship will be here. Okay. So an example here would be the aldehyde. It's it's electron withdrawing, so all the electrons are away from the hydrogen, and now um, the hydrogen is deshielded, and it's probably going to show up on NMRs around like eight-ish. Okay, and then uh, benzene rings. The benzene rings also withdraw electrons to the center, so the electron field is going to be more pushed away, and then that's why this hydrogen is more deshielded than these hydrogens. But um, it's being the electrons are being withdrawn uh, more weaker than this one here. So that's why it's more upfield than this guy. Okay. And last one is uh, these three hydrogens here. They they have carbon bonds to them. And for now, I don't have anything else here. But but they don't have any like um, electron withdrawing sort of functional groups or anything in their environment. So that's why they're more upfield and shielded. Okay. The second one that the second thing that NMRs tell us is how the height of the peaks uh, is related to the number of hydrogens. Well, it turns out that the height of the peaks uh, are directly correlated to the number of hydrogens they represent. So that's why this peak is so low down here. It's because if you add up these individual little tiny things up here, and then this shift is going to be uh, about one third of this one here because it only represents one hydrogen in this one here. And then this peak here represents three hydrogens, so that's why it's about right here. And then in the benzene ring, the, there's six hydrogens represented here. That's why it's twice this peak. Okay. And then, so that, that might, be, might be a useful trick that you guys can use on a test if you're running out of time and they want you to identify hydrogens and you can only like write like, two things down really quick. Okay. Um, next. Splitting. So what splitting is basically what you see over here. Normally you're used to seeing like a whole peak here, like these two. And then basically it tells us the number of unequivalent hydrogens within three bond distance. So let's look at this example here. Um, there is one, two, three, four. So that's a quartet. And it makes sense because um, there are three unequivalent hydrogens within three bonds distance to this guy, because it's one bond, two bond, three bonds, one bond, two bond, three bonds, one bond, two bond, three bonds. 
So, and you might be asking yourself, why is there a quartet even though there's only three unequivalent hydrogens? And it's because of the n plus one rule. I'll talk more about this in my next video, but the n stands for the number of unequivalent hydrogens. So, there's three non-equivalent hydrogens plus one is equal to four. So that's why we get our quartet.